Well, when my carp fishing and my barbel fishing slows down, this is what I'm doing most days, and that's out to try and catch a pike because it's one of the easiest fish to catch in the winter. A couple of dead baits on the bottom. Pike comes along. I think it was Fred J. Taylor that said many years ago when he said that it ain't if you're going to catch a pike on a dead bait on the bottom, it's only when. And that's right, that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to sit down, have a look at the birds, enjoy the day, it's a lovely day, and hopefully these indicators are going to drop off a couple of times. Well, there we go, the first fish of the day, and my favorite pop-up rig produced. There it is, I'll show you that later. Nicely hooked to come out in the net, landed it. Beautiful fish, I'll show you the rig in a minute. And there's the, there's the old pike. Look at that, an absolute beauty. Quite a, a long fish, but that's very typical of what's happened the last, the last summer. We had such a hot summer, it's not been that good for the pike. I don't think they fed that well. But uh, that's starting to put it on now. A lovely fish, well into double figures. Absolutely fabulous. What I would say about returning pike is I'm just waiting here now. Very often, people will put them into the water. As soon as the fish starts moving a little bit, they drop the net and let it go. And that could mean it could just swim out there. It's not really ready to go. You can have him go on the side and lay on the bottom, maybe die. If you just wait two or three minutes, so he really wants to get out the net. Look at that fish now. That fish is fresh and ready to go. He wants to go, or she wants to go. So now we'll just drop the net over, just drop it over and let her go. There she goes, look. When she throws water back in your face, she's ready to go. Let's show you that rig. This is very much a standard rig that I use for a lot of my pike, piking on uh, dead baits on the bottom. And that's a, a pike fledger, you know, so it's holding the, the rig out of any silt, etc. A boom, just to make the casting sort of uh, more efficient, it keeps the, the rig away from the lead. And then a standard wire trace, standard snap tattle, and the popper. And that's basically it. So that's popping off the bottom. I would say 90% of my pike fishing now, I fish bait off the bottom. I like, I like it off the bottom. I think it's easier for the fish to take the bait and I get a lot of takes like that. And the hooking couldn't be simpler. Little tag tells me where the barb is. One into the tail, like so. One into the tail, like so. The other tag into the bait halfway down. I don't like the trace too long. I don't want the trace, I don't want the hook too far down here. I just think it gives a better chance of getting the fish deeper hooked. When the fish grabs hold of it like that, it's across his jaws. And then that pop-up just gives it that bit of lift. Especially the frozen, at first, it's popped up anyway, but this keeps it up and just keeps it like that off the bottom. And as that just showed, it catches a lot of fish. A good fish at that. What I'm about to say now is very, very important. Sounds obvious, but so many people make this basic mistake. When you cast in, if this goes in, one big lump like this, those hooks could get the braid and you end up fishing a rig that's all tangled. What I want to do is when I cast out, whether I'm carping, piking, whatever, I watch the rig and I always feather it down so this is separated from the rig. Okay, that's how it needs to go in. So when that hits the bottom, I then wind that down and that will stick up separate from that lead perfectly. If it goes in like a heap, it ain't gonna fish and you're gonna leave that out two, three, four hours and when you reel it in, it's a mess. No good. So when I put it in, I watch the bait. I don't just cast out. Here we go. You'll see them separate. That's what I wanna do. We're just fishing close. How it goes there, look, separated, perfect. So having cast it out, what I've done is wind down, wind down till I can feel that 
the swivels have come together, it's locked so now that bait is now fishing up in the water and all I need to do now is just set it up on the rod rest and away we go. Put it into the indicator like so. Set it up like so. There you go. I actually like to fish an indicator at the back and the indicator that shows me the run at the front. I like to use one of the standard carp buzzers. That one's a siren that actually shows the speed of the run. Normally, I've found that the faster the take, the bigger the fish. There we go, that's the end of what can, you can only describe as a great day really, in that at four takes, I've had a couple of fish up to 12 pounds. The excitement of it, 12 pound, but when the indicator dropped off, could have been a 30 pounder, could have been a 40 pounder, could have been the monster of monsters. You know, at the end of the day, you know, that's what we're waiting for, that indicator to drop off. And in such beautiful weather, I've had robins landing on the rods, you know, I've had buzzards flying over it. I've had a, fabulous time and um, I hope you've had a good time watching and I'll see you next time round.